What's up, everybody? This is Alex with WMD back at you again. Today, we are going to check out Sample and Hold as a concept. We're going to be using the mod box from WMD SSF as our main sample and hold circuit. This is not a sampler. This is actually more of like a snapshot grabber. So we're going to take voltage and we're going to put it into this circuit. Then with our clock input, we can basically say take a snapshot of that voltage at that time. So the LFO goes up, we say stop. If the LFO is at three volts at that point, now we're just going to get three volts out of the output. That voltage will stay there until the next clock pulse. So the mod box is basically a dual LFO and a sample and hold. The second LFO signal is actually normaled to the clock input. So that means that the snapshots that we're going to be taking are going to be controlled by that LFO. So every time that LFO is high, that's when we get a snapshot. The Modbox also has a noise generator, which is normaled to the sample input. So we're always sampling noise. So to explain this, the first thing we're going to do is just listen to an oscillator. And we're going to take our sample and hold output of the Modbox and plug it into the volt proactive of the spectrum. Right? That's pretty dope. That sounds pretty modular. I think this is what everybody thinks modular sounds like. We can make it super fast. We can make it slow. And we're just getting random pitches, right? Another thing we'll do is we'll just take this spectrum oscillator and we'll run it into a low pass filter. And now we're gonna take our sample and hold and we're just going to modulate the filter. And this uh, mod box is actually synced to my sequencer right now. That's a cool thing about the mod box. You can put a clock signal into the sync input. Then you can basically use it as a clock divider or a clock multiplier. So if we just bring in the beat, we can get pretty ravey just with this sound, right? All right, so what else can we do? So instead of just going straight out of the sample and hold, I found out about this uh, earlier this morning and I'm really stoked about it. We're gonna actually process our sample and hold signal, what's going into our filter. We're going to process that with another low pass filter. So I'm gonna plug it into the evolution over here, which is the Rossum low pass filter. And we're gonna take the output of that and plug it into the FM input on our filter. All right, so what's happening right now is when we add this resonance, we're actually basically mixing in a little bit of a sine wave signal, right? So we're kind of creating this crazy FM sound over our filter. It sounds really cool to do into this filter signal and turn up the uh, cue a little bit. We're getting all these crazy weird sounds, right? So let's take the sample and hold signal that is actually running, that we're processing. We're going to take the same signal that we're processing through the filter. We're actually going to use it to open and close the filter via CV. Yeah, so that's like pretty cool sounds. We can get super spacey with it. And we're still hearing the spectrum come through, right? So I can just take that out, we'll just listen to the resonance, that's pretty wild. And we'll go back into the spectrum. Just a little bit more, just for a little bit more of variety. We're gonna take the same signal that we're clocking our mod box with, and we're gonna trigger an envelope. And we'll use this to modulate our filter even more. Right? So that's pretty wild. We're just taking the sample and hold output, we're running it through a low-pass filter, and we're controlling the low-pass filter that's actually filtering the oscillator signal. 
So the last thing we'll do is we'll take that same signal. So we're going to take the output of the evolution. We're going to take the processed version and we're going to run it into our spectrum oscillator one volt per octave. If I find the channel. Now this is modular, right? Like this is this is what we're talking about. <laughs> and plug into the F input, get a little bit less um, volt per octave sounds. Put it back in the volt per octave. And then we'll mess around with the evolution that's uh, filtering. Alright, so that's some pretty crazy sound that we're just making just with a sample and hold and a couple different ideas on how to like process that signal and make it into something different. Okay, so beyond just modulating parameters, we can actually use the sample and hold to process different signals. One of the first things we're going to do is use a sine wave. So I'll just let you listen to it. This is our sine wave. And we're actually going to process this audio signal with the sample and hold and turn it into a downsampled kind of more digital sounding waveform. First things first, we'll take our other spectrum and we'll listen to them side by side and just kind of get them in tune with each other. So I'll plug this in. All right, so they're pretty close to in tune. Take the sine wave of one spectrum, we're going to run it into the sample input on the mod box, and then we're going to take the sample and hold out and run it into our output. So now we're hearing just clicks and pops because our skew rate, our skew LFO, the second LFO on the mod box, is still in control over the clock. So now we're going to clock this with our other spectrum. They're at the same frequency, right? So if I bring up an octave, we're now hearing this sine wave coming through and we're hearing it being sampled. So we're hearing a more rigid version of this sine wave. The further I bring this up, the closer to the actual signal we're going to get because the samples are becoming closer and closer together, faster and faster, that our waveform is becoming less and less rigid as it goes up and down, right? So we can get all the way to the point where you can't even hear the aliasing anymore. We bring those down, and we can get down into like saw wave territory, right? And we can tune them together and make kind of cool sounds. So we'll take an output of this mini slew here. And this is, I'm just kind of using as an LFO right now. And we will plug that into the FM input on our spectrum that is clocking the sample and hold. And now we're basically modulating the size of those samples. And I'll take a gate output of my Metron here and we'll plug that into the envelope. So instead of it free running, we can actually choose like a rhythm for it to run and then run our beat again. And then we'll do like a real fast attack here. So yeah, that's sample rate. So basically we are just taking those snapshots and making them smaller and bigger and we're listening to the output. So when you're clocking and listening at audio rate, you get this crazy sound. Hell yeah. All right, so we've got this envelope controlling that. We're making some crazy uh, like dubstep trap sounds now, right? <laughs> We're gonna use this same envelope output and we'll take that sample and hold and run it through the filter. And then we'll use this same envelope sound or uh, signal and we'll run it into our filter. Just get double 
harmonic action here. And then for good measure, we'll run it through a delay. I mean, so we could be headlining festivals just with that, right? <laughs> Going wild. We got space sounds. We got sub bass. I mean, we're ready to go. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to quantize the output of our sample and hold and use it as more of a melody generator. And we're going to use the sample and hold out. And remember, again, if I listen, if we listen to the output here of just a straight up spectrum. And we take our sample and hold out, plug it into the Volt Per Octave input. We just get random voltages, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our sample and hold signal, and we're going to run it into the Arpitect here. The Arpitect is a quantizer. It's also an arpeggio generator, so you can use it to create standalone voltages. But in this example, we're just using it to process the voltages coming out of our mod box. So now the Arpitect is only allowing it to play certain notes. And I can change the melody there that we're uh, sampling with here, or the clocks that we're sampling with, just to kind of switch up the melody a little bit. And I'm going to take that reset input again. And this is going to make it a little bit more repetitive, right? This is going to just say, okay, we're resetting the architect on one, which means our pattern is going to be pretty much the same every time it wraps around the sequence. And then I can change up our uh, clock rhythm again. And yeah. Sample and hold is a really cool thing to experiment with, with your pitches and different modules that are creating pitches. You can basically quantize the sample and hold like we did earlier, or you can use a sequencer or an arpeggiator and then just grab notes from it. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to just process some panning on our drums. So I'm going to bring in this beat here, and then I'm going to take our sample and hold out. I'll make sure to sync my mod box again so we're hap so it's happening in 16th notes. And we're going to take the sample and hold output and we're just going to run it straight into the panning of this Camara here. So now if you're wearing headphones, you're listening to this on speakers, you'll hear that it's just randomly jumping around. One reason why you might want to use a sample and hold instead of an LFO to process panning is that you sometimes you don't want that transition. You don't want to hear it moving across, right? So this is stepped voltages still. So it's going to be here, then here, then maybe here, then maybe here, but it's never going to be here and then transition to here. It's always just going to be in a random spot. So another cool thing we can do is take this sample and hold out. We're going to molt the signal. So we'll take this sweet little hopscotch cable from Hosa and we'll run it into, we'll run our molted signal into an inverter. Whatever this signal is doing, this is going to be an opposite signal of that, so I'm using the WMD SSF toolbox for that. We're going to use this to process our hi-hat panning. And so now our Camara and our pan or our Camara and our hi-hat are just literally going to always be in opposite places. Which is kind of cool. It's kind of like a pseudo ping pong delay, you know. So we bring our bring our kick drums in, bring our little fracture in. And then yet again I'm going to molt the positive signal here and we're going to run that into the surface on the fracture again get some cool sounds there we'll take that exact same signal and run it into the camera's decay
And um, yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty dope right there, right? So yeah, that's Sample and Hold. That's a bunch of examples. I hope I gave you some ideas. If you have any uh, examples of Sample and Hold that you like to use, throw them down in the comments. If you have any ideas on things, techniques, modules, pedals, anything like that that you would like to see me work out and demonstrate, please just hit us up via email or on... Um, on the comments once again and make sure to follow us on instagram like and subscribe on youtube and uh yeah until next time thanks for watching